Alright, so let's have a look at a draft. We'll uh, open up a, an existing file. This has already got an image in there, just waiting for a parts list. So I'll put a parts list in there, just using the standard commands. Nothing too special about that, except you'll notice now that you have the option of creating what's called an alignment shape. And I can show and hide that and you know, do whatever I want. I can also edit the alignment shape just by clicking on it and dragging the handles. And you'll notice that all of the annotations move with it. So it keeps it really clean. Um, now if I only want to edit one section of the alignment shape, I hold down the shift key. And that lets me just change one part of it. I can use the standard alt drag to remove, to you know, attach or detach various items to and from alignment shapes. Um, and I can just drag it back on as needed. However, I can also have more than one alignment shape for an existing view or for a view. So I've got various options here and effectively I just click to start and drag a line and any annotation that it crosses gets added in. Now we've got various options. I can close it. I can just drag this new annotation around. It's completely independent. I can alter the spacing if I choose. Um, however, if I do choose to have uniform spacing, then obviously editing the shape changes the spacing as well. So that's just a really nice new option for laying out annotations. Um, we've also got the option new in ST6 of editing the tables in place. And you'll see I've got all the formatting and you know cell formatting options right there as I'm editing just by clicking on it. I can also do cell overrides and basically you just type over it and it, it makes it a different color so it's very very easy to see. It's also easy to just clear the cell overrides as well. I've got the options of merging, adjusting text and formatting and layout you know pretty much as needed now. So it just means you can get your tables looking how you want very very quickly. Next thing we'll look at is just drawing view alignment. I can create alignments either by view centers or key points and you can do it in any of the particular directions you want. We're just doing this one by key point and I'll just do this one by view centers. I'll create another alignment view centers from there to there and it just snaps them makes them very very easy to position and move around as needed all right the next option is we've got an arrange dimensions um, tool now and I can set a stack pitch and then I just click on the view and accept and it arranges all of the dimensions around a view automatically according to the options you set. You know if I change the stack pitch and click on that view again it will rearrange the views on the dimensions on the end there just moved out. Now what if you don't want to do all of the dimensions? I can I can just grab some of the dimensions and I've got a new directional fence selection tool. I can select either left to right or right to left and that allows me to select everything that's in or everything that's in and crossing. And you can see there that I can also arrange a select group of dimensions or even one at a time. So we move on to the block new blocks functionality. Where you've, where you've got a block schematic, um, where basically you've got a whole heap of information here with no 3D uh, model, you can generate parts lists or block lists from either a view, a sheet, or a user selection. We'll use the active sheet in this case. I'll just place it over here, zoom in. You'll see, for example, there are five amp views, there's two of them. I've got various block options here. I can view I can break down the list by block views or even by block occurrences. I'll just apply this and show you. That gives you a header 
there's two and each of the occurrences underneath it. If I take that off, you'll see that it just gives me the occurrences. Now, one other thing I can do, I've got various other options here with nested blocks and things, but I can also bring in the data from the block lists. For example, I might want to add the amperage from any block that contains an amperage into my table. So I'll just add that, move it up one, and you can see now the blocks that contain amperage are listed in my block view. So that's just another nice tool. We can also now edit embedded documents directly within Solid Edge. Now notice, as soon as I clicked on that, the toolbars basically change to Word because this is an embedded Word document. So I want to change the picture and notice I've got all of my Microsoft Word tools and it behaves now as a Microsoft Word document, except I didn't have to go out and start up Microsoft Word and do all of those kind of things. And basically you can change the layout, the text formatting, anything you want about this document, you just change it directly within the Solid Edge interface. All of my right-click menus are all the same. As soon as I click out, I'm back in Solid Edge. And this one's an Excel document. And I'll just double click it. I've got my Excel menus. And I can now, you know, create formulas. I might say this is a total and I'll do a, a, a sum formula. Um, all of the standard Excel functions are right there at your fingertips because I'm actually now editing this effectively within an Excel environment, even though it's still within Solid Edge. So I've got a lot of functionality and flexibility. Whatever view you jump out of the document in is the view that you see. So you've got exact control over exactly what you see in the document. So that's some of the drafting enhancements. Back to you, Barry.